Last edition, we took Project STI to renowned WRX specialist MRT Performance to have the fuel system upgraded. The first stage was to replace the standard Subaru fuel rails with MRT's anodized billet aluminium versions. And this month, we look at the installation of the MRT spec fuel pump, an in-tank anti-surge device. As we mentioned in the last edition, these are not power increasing modifications, but rather ensure that the engine is given sufficient fuel supply in all conditions, particularly high load performance applications. Additionally, the engine will require increased fuel supply when we perform power upgrades in the near future. Now the fuel pump that we're going to fit is obviously a fuel pump that we've designed and tested for quite some time. It's a replacement fuel pump that you can see that directly fits where the original factory fuel pump is fitted within the tank. Now this is a in-tank pump, not an external tank pump. The advantage of that is you don't have any potential risk of uh, smelly fuel vapour in the boot of your car or exposed fuel lines under the back where you could obviously be defected for. Um, the other advantage is it's a lot simpler to fit, there's less labour involved and the most critical thing is obviously this fuel pump is designed to meet four to five hundred horsepower applications. Most Subaru STIs that are developing you know, 300, 400 kilowatts at the wheels, this pump is capable of delivering enough fuel to meet the demand of the engine. The last thing that we're actually fitting in this car is obviously specifically designed for anti-surge applications when Project STI is obviously being used on the track. We've got the original factory anti-surge device, the location of the fuel pump and obviously your fuel, fuel gauge centre that, tell, that floats on the top of the fuel to tell you how much fuel you've got in the tank. When your car's running, obviously the fuel's sloshing backwards and forwards this way. When you're going around corners, it's going this way. What happens is, obviously the fuel is drawn through the anti-surge device inside this small box through a pre-filter, up through the fuel pump under pressure and out through here to the engine. It then comes back down through here whereby it draws the fuel from the other side of the tank across, because remember it's a hump tank so it's not all level, through here into the anti-surge device where the recycled fuel from the unburnt use of the engine obviously mixes with the existing fuel in the tank and the surge pot and then gets drawn back up into the system again. What this component does is recirculate the return fuel or stores almost an amount of fuel around the inlet to the fuel pump so when the fuel pump is sucking out of the tank it doesn't have to rely on the sloshing of the fuel in the tank and it can supply it immediately when the injector is needed. Once again, MRT veteran Michael performs a procedure which is far less complex than the fuel rail upgrade. Immediately behind the back seat on the driver's side, there's a pressed metal cover and the screws that fasten it to the bodywork had to be removed. Once the cover had been removed, the electrical harness for the fuel pump and gauge sender had to be unplugged. Then the fuel houses were disconnected, which does cause a bit of fuel spillage. The car should be on a level surface and the tank can't be too full. And plenty of rags are required to make sure all the fuel is mopped up. Next, the bolts from the fuel pump assembly cover had to be removed and the cover had to come off carefully as not to tear or damage the rubber seal. Then came the tricky part. The whole fuel pump and gauge sender assembly had to be carefully withdrawn from the fuel tank by lifting an angle and rotating to the right. It can only be removed one way and it must be done carefully not to damage the gauge sender unit. The assembly had to be put on a clean workbench and the positive and negative wires to the fuel pump unplugged. Then the fuel pump had to be disconnected from the flexible fuel hose. At this point the MRT anti-surge fuel kit was fitted into the tank by bolting it to the leg assembly on the factory fuel pump mount. When fitting the MRT spec fuel pump, the location of the pre-filter had to be noted to ensure the new pump was positioned in the same place as the factory pump. It's a tight squeeze to get the assembly back into the tank, but it fits like a glove. After this, the removal process was reversed, with Michael ensuring the seal for the cover of the fuel tank assembly was properly seated in the correct position to avoid fuel leakage. As with any fuel device, if you're performing this kind of modification yourself, it's crucial to use common sense if you don't want your car stinking of fuel. Stay tuned for more mods from MRT.